Thank you for visiting the Rule of Law Revolution. Let me give you a brief introduction. Chances are, no matter what national political problems would make your personal top ten list, most of the problems on your mind today came about as a result of the most fundamental problem of all. Fix that one problem, and you fixed a thousand problems. Here it is. Our governments, from the federal government to the states, counties, and cities, have been gradually throwing off the rule of law for the last 100 years or so. As a result, this is no longer the same nation it was meant to be. And the people aren't nearly as free as they were meant to be. Whether you figured it out yet or not, you don't have nearly the number of rights that our nation's founders planned for you to have. Let me explain how this happened, using the federal government as an example. Early on, our nation's founders realized that they were going to need some sort of federal government to keep the peace between the states. The people were to be the boss, and the government was to be the servant. They knew from bitter experience that they didn't want a dictator with unlimited powers. Instead, they wanted a government that had to abide by some strict rules, rules that not even the people could get around easily. This concept is called the rule of law. So they wrote this. The Constitution of the United States was the document that would keep the government on a short leash, to keep it from becoming the master rather than the servant. They wanted that government in a strong cage. The government was confined to what the law allowed, and it was prohibited from going beyond those limits. The people really liked this idea, even though the founders said that the people would have to be in charge of keeping the government from overstepping its constitutional boundaries, and the people promised they would. But they didn't understand that they had to be watching like a hawk every minute, and so in time it turned into this. This is the America we've inherited, and now our servant government is our master. High taxes, inflation, incessant wars, bailouts, recessions, bubbles, massive job losses, and the increasing infringements on our civil rights are not merely the results of differences of opinion or of differing partisan agendas as we've been conditioned to believe. Rather, these are the results of a multitude of unlawful usurpations of power by our federal government. They are exceeding the authority given them by the Constitution. Well, now the people are starting to wake up and to realize that they should have kept their promise to keep an eye on the government. And that means that now it's time for just about every elected official in this room to go do something else and give the government back to the people. The rule of law revolution is about demanding candidates who will go do what needs to be done to put the United States back under the rule of law, back under the Constitution. It's not about party. It's about who has enough honor to want to follow the law. It's very simple. The candidates who are good guys take a pledge that they won't exceed the powers given them by the Constitution and that they'll make the fullest use of their checks and balances powers to keep the rest of government from exceeding its powers. Meanwhile, we get millions of voters to take the voters' pledge, promising never to vote for any candidate for office who hasn't first taken the candidate's pledge I just described. So it's goodbye to the lesser of two evils. It's time that the American citizens put the political parties on notice that we won't be voting for their candidates anymore just because we're party members. Take the voters' pledge today and insist on candidates who want to honor the rule of law.